Hello and welcome to the second half of the chi-squared test video. Uh, in the previous video, you learned how to do chi-squared goodness of fit tests, and that's where you ask one categorical response variable, and then you tally the results, and you decide whether those tally of results are statistically uniform or statistically not uniform. If you get a p-value that's less than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis of uniformity and support the alternative hypothesis of non-uniformity or group preference. Today we're going to talk about the chi-square test of independence, and that's when you ask a group of people two categorical response questions, and then you group those questions into a pivot table or a contingency table or a two-way table, whatever you want to call it, and you decide whether somebody's response to question one has any dependence on their response to question two. Basically, are their responses related in some way? Does being a woman make them respond differently than if they were a man? Does being in a cer certain socioeconomic status make them respond differently? Does having a certain hair color, does being in a certain category of age group make them respond differently to another question? Okay, so that is what we are going to be looking at here. So when we do a chi-square test of independence, we have two generic hypotheses. Hypothesis number one is all things being equal, being a man or a woman or a subset of a different age group or the number of years you have with a company, it doesn't affect your response. So H sub O is that the two variables or responses are independent. One does not influence the other. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a statistical influence present and that the two variables or responses are dependent, okay? So here's an example of a contingency table. Um, and what I went with here was I asked a group of people their gender, and I asked them what political party they uh, choose to affiliate with. And the only choices were male and female and Democrat and Republican. Obviously, there are more choices possible for each of those, but we're just going to pretend that we force people to pick from Democrat or Republican, male or female. Now, when I look at this table, you have to know how to read it. So within this table, this right-hand corner total is how many people overall. So there were 192 total people, 86 of whom said they were Democrats, 106 of whom said they were Republicans. Of those 192, 140 were male and 52 were female. Here is where everything gets more interesting. What we also are going to do here is we are going to realize that 56 of those 140 men identified as Democrats and 84 of those 140 men identified as Republican. And then of the 52 females, 30 identified as Democrat and 22 identified as Republican. Now, what we want to see now is, is there a statistical difference between the percentage of men who identified as Republican and Democrat versus women who identified as Democrat and Republican? It looks like more men identified as Republican than Democrat and more women identified as Democrat than Republican. But is that a statistical enough difference? OK, I don't know yet. And then there is where we jump to these contingency tables and we do a chi-square test of independence. So I am going to jump out of here and jump into Excel. Okay. And so in this Excel sheet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all that information. So we had gender and it was male and female. And then we had party and we had Democrat and Republican. Okay. And let me just make this a little bit bigger so you're not all squinting at the screen. And then when I look back here, I've got 56, 30, 56, 30, 84, 22. Okay. And then to get the totals, just to remind you, Excel can do that for you. I obviously could type it in. But what I could also do is hit the equal sign and not say sun, sum of these two. And then I'm going to take that and drag it all the way over to the corner. And it's angry right now because there's nothing above this. But I also want to put in totals going across. It's going to add those two and then take this and drag that down. And I should have the same table that I had over here. Ta-da! 
Well, when I do a chi-square fit test, okay, and this time we're going to do a chi-square test of independence, the goodness of fit test needed an expected column and an actual column. This is the actual array, okay? I need an expected array. And it's a really bizarre set of circumstances that you're going to do in Excel. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, and so hopefully it makes a little bit of sense to you. If it doesn't, just trust that Excel knows what it's doing. So what I'm going to do down here is I am actually going to copy this exact same thing and paste it down here. But then I'm going to delete this interior part. Okay. Up here, this is my actual results. Down here, these would be my expected results. Again, given that all things are um, equal, that males and females identify as Republicans and Democrats, you know, randomly. In order to get this, I'm going to highlight these four. I'm going to hit the equal sign. I'm going to highlight the column totals, multiply by the highlighted row totals, and divide by the corner overall total. And then I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Enter all at the same time, and it's going to fill these up. What I want you to notice, what's important that you notice, isn't these values, it's that your totals all remained the same. So what this expected value is doing is saying, we're not going to change the Democrat and Republican totals. We're not going to change the male and female totals. But what we're going to do is even out the inside so that the percentage of Democrat to Republican for men is the same as the percentage of Democrat to Republican for women. Okay. And that's what we end up with. If nothing I just said makes sense, just know that this is evening everything out. Okay. All right. So now I need to do a chi-square test. So I'm going to write chi p-value right here. And then I'm going to go into FX, just like I did before. Choose chi test. My actual range is the inside only, not the totals, the inside of the actual array. And then my expected range is the inside of the expected array. And I'm going to hit OK. And I got a p-value of 0 0.02847. OK, so what can I do with this? I can make a text box. And that text box would be this. So basically, what's our question? Are party affiliation and gender independent or dependent? OK. So our null hypothesis would be all things being equal, they're independent. Gender and party affiliation are independent. Okay. And our H sub A would be gender and party affiliation are dependent. Our alpha level for whatever test we do is 0 0.05. Well, what test are we going to run? Well, the first thing I know is it's a chi-square test. It's a chi-square test because I am looking at frequencies. How many men? How many women? Okay. I'm looking at categorical totals, not numerical results. So I am comparing frequencies, which means I'm doing a chi-square test. And this is a chi-square, not goodness of fit, test of independence because I am looking at whether things are independent or not. The p-value that resulted from this test is 0 0.028 and our conclusion is since p is less than 0 0.05 remember if p is small reject the null we can reject the null hypothesis therefore we support the idea that gender and affiliation are dependent aka there's a relationship between someone's gender and the political party that they support, if you want to say support. Okay. I know there's some typos in there, but whatever. That's it. That's how you do a test of independence. It's really not that hard. So I'm going to go back to my slides here for a moment. And if I go back to the slides, 
I'm just going to walk you through everything. So here's what we had. Um, we grab those expected values. This explains what I did in the slides, getting that expected table. Okay, Excel did it for us. What did we analyze? So we analyzed that we had multiple categories and multiple results, and we want to see if the categories and the results are dependent or independent. Okay. Here's our test. Here's our H sub O, H sub A, our alpha level chi-square test of independence, and we rejected the null hypothesis. Okay. So again, let's go back to this which versus, you know, which one am I going to use? A goodness of fit test is when you have only one group responding to a survey, okay? You have one single column of data points frequency. I grabbed one group of people and I only asked them one question. What party do you associate with? That would be goodness of fit. In this one, I asked two questions, which really means I split the group into two sets, the men and the women. Okay, so there's two different ways to think about this. A goodness of fit test is when you have one group of people and you ask them one question. Okay, a test of independence is when you have one group of people, but you ask them two questions, or you could think about it as you have two groups of people and you ask them each the same question and compare the results among the groups. It doesn't really matter. What you need to understand is that a chi-square test of independence is when there are two categorical responses that you are collecting. Which group are you a part of and what answer do you have to this question? Okay. All right. Now, we can also get goodness of fit from raw data using a pivot table. Um, and I am going to do that with you right now. So let me pull up the survey. Okay. Eventually. Okay. So here is our original data. And I am going to pull a chunk of this information into a new chart over here. Okay, so I have gender, service, all of that. I want these to go away so they don't get in my way. And let's see, let's go back to this gender idea. I want to know if gender influences their response to question number one. Okay, so let's take a second to identify what these things potentially mean. So gender, let's say one equals male, two equals female. I'm just making this up. Okay. And let's say survey statement number one was um, one equals SB, five equals SA. Okay. And let's say statement number one was, um, I believe I am compensated appropriately for my work at this company. Okay. All right, so I want to know if there's a relationship between those. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a pivot table. So I'm actually going to delete this, okay? And I'm going to get gender and column one next to each other. I am going to highlight them, and then I am going to go to insert pivot table. All right, and there's my range. And I am going to put my pivot table on this existing worksheet. I'm going to dump it right here and hit OK. And it's going to give me a whole bunch of choices, but no actual pivot table. So I am going to put gender in rows. Now, does it matter where it goes? Technically, no, but here's why I'm going to put gender in rows. Um, by the way, I'm just clicking on this and dragging it down. So I am going to put gender in rows. What I usually do is I like to put the variable that does the influencing in the rows. I think that gender might influence their response to the survey question. I don't think the survey question influences what type of gender they, are ident they identify with. Okay, So gender is going to go in rows, and their responses to number one is going to go over here in columns and into where it says values. Okay, It just has to go in both. And then I'm going to change this from sum to count because I want it to count up the values, not add up the values. And now I have a pivot table. Hooray. So here is my happy little pivot table. We had nine people who strongly disagreed, 16 people who disagreed, three who were neutral and one who agreed. Okay. I have no strongly agree. 
And I had 17 men and 12 women for a grand total of 29 respondents. Now I want to know, do men and women respond differently to their feeling about how they're being paid? Let's find out. So before I even run the data, I want to oops, click the wrong thing. I'm going to insert another text box over here. And I am going to say, what are we looking at? So we're going to say our gender and pay, what do we want to say? Pay satisfaction, independent or dependent. Does someone's gender seem to affect how they feel about their pay scale. Cool. So our null hypothesis would be all things being equal, gender and pay satisfaction are independent. H sub A, gender and pay satisfaction are dependent. My alpha is 0 0.05. And what test am I going to run? Well, I'm looking at frequencies. And if I'm looking at frequencies, it's got to be a chi-square test. Okay. Now, which chi-square test is it? I am looking at an array of frequencies. So if I'm looking at an array of frequencies, that's a chi-square test of independence. Okay. Now I have to run the test. I have to find the p-value. Well, I can't find that p-value until I come over here and get myself an expected table. So I am going to say, let's say gender, male, female, and up here, I'm going to have response one, two, three, four. Okay. And now I need to do that expected thing again. So I am going to highlight the inside of this male, female, one to four, hit equals, highlight these totals multiply by these totals, divide by the corner total, control, shift, enter. And there is my expected value table. Um, if I stretch these out, you might notice that they are all decimals. It just rounds them when they're too shrunk. And I don't actually need the totals, but if I wanted them, I could easily get them to make sure I did everything right to make sure that they were the same totals as above. And that looks pretty good. And that looks good too. Okay, so now I have my actual pivot table. I have my expected pivot table. And now I need to get the chi-squared p-value. And so I'm going to go over here to chi test. My actual arrange array, pardon me, is the inside of the table. My expected range is the inside of this table. And then I hit OK. And I get 0. 0.714. That is not a small p-value. That's a big p-value. Okay, so my p-value is 0. 0.714. Since p is not less than alpha, We cannot reject HL, therefore we retain the possibility that gender and satisfaction with pay are independent. Again, let me bring up the fact that when you don't reject the null hypothesis, that's not a bad thing. It's not like the test didn't work. What this tells you is that your company isn't making men or women feel statistically different in their value. Okay? Now, Another thing I could say is nobody seems happy with their pay, but I guess the good news, it's not that women seem even more unhappy than the men. Everybody's equally feeling pretty crappy about their pay right now. Okay. And that's kind of what you're showing. So there is a chi-square test of independence using an array. Let me see if there's anything that I forgot to say in these slides. I don't think so, but we're about to find out. We did the goodness of fit from raw data. Okay. Um, and there are other videos that go with this. I will post those in by your homework.